Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation on skin integrity. My name is Kyan Wade and I am currently a second year occupational therapy doctoral student at the University of Kansas Medical Center. I'm completing my first level two field work at the American Stroke Foundation and here is my presentation. So just as an overview today, we will be talking about the skin, skin integrity, pressure wounds, the causes and stages of pressure wounds, how to prevent pressure wounds, how to treat pressure wounds, promoting overall skin integrity, and then some questions if you guys have any. So the skin is composed of three layers. Your outermost layer is the epidermis and it acts to provide a barrier. And then we go a little bit deeper to the middle layer, and this is called the dermis. It provides protection and cushions, uh, deeper structures, and it is extremely important in wound healing. Lastly, we go to the deepest layer, um, which stores energy, insulates the body, and provides protection. This is all done by the hypodermis. Um, so the skin is the largest organ of the body. It renews itself every 28 to 30 days, and it accounts for approximately 15% of your total body weight. So again, we talked about some of the functions of the skin based on the layers of the skin, but overall the skin functions to protect us. Um, you may think in like the summer, we get a lot of sunburns. That's one way our skin protects us is from those UV rays. Our skin can excrete waste and different things like that that may be harmful to our bodies. It provides heat regulation um, by storing fat and keeping us um, warm during the winter or by uh, producing the sweat and cooling us off in the summer. Um, it also helps us with sensation, secretion, and absorption. So with absorption, it would look like maybe putting like an antibiotic ointment or cream on your skin or absorbing vitamin D, different things like that. So what is skin integrity? Skin integrity is known as skin health. And when an individual experiences some difficulties or issues with their skin integrity, it can look like damaged skin, skin that may be vulnerable to injury, or skin that is just unable to heal normally. So next we'll go into talking about pressure wounds. Um, so pressure wounds have multiple names. They're also known as pressure sores, bed sores, or bed ulcer, or pressure ulcers. Um, and it's simply an injury to surrounding skin and tissue. If you look over here at our image, we can see the, the pressure wound is the pink. And that's just caused by repeated pressure to that area, which has caused damage over time. So the causes of pressure wounds are repeated and constant pressure to the skin as it squeezes against a hard surface. It decreases the uh, blood flow to that area. And um, it can also be caused by spending a lot of time sitting or lying down, um, having ill-fitting clothing, skin irritations from sweat or other body fluids, and AFOs, braces or splints, maybe not fitting properly or maybe rubbing in a specific area a lot. Um, so the way I think about the skin irritation from sweat or other body fluids is think about like in the summer when you're wearing shoes and you're sweating a lot and maybe you're getting like a rub on the back of your heel. And over time that irritation from the sweat and then the rubbing of the strap or the back of your heel is just going to cause a wound. So who's at an increased risk for developing pressure wounds? So individuals who have a history of pressure ulcers or have an existing pressure ulcers are at an increased risk. Um, those with uh, maybe difficulty being able to be mobile uh, in those different conditions such as neurological disorders, spinal cord injuries or brain injuries, 
And then individuals with sensory impairment or diabetes, this is just caused by the individual maybe not being able to feel that there is a tremendous amount of pressure being applied or that there is a wound forming. So in that case, it would be very important to do the visual scanning of your skin and visual inspection to make sure that you're not developing a wound in those areas. So here are some common locations of pressure wounds. Commonly, they're found on the back of the head and ears, your shoulder, your elbow, your lower back and butt, and then your hips, inner knees and heels. And these are just uh, areas where there's a little bit more of a bony um, area. And so like if you're lying on them for long periods of time, th those are areas that could take some of the impact of the pressure. So there are multiple stages to pressure wounds. Um, there's four different stages and they're kind of classified on the level of severity. So obviously in stage one, it's a concern because we don't want it to develop further, but it's not maybe as serious as a stage four um, pressure wound. So we'll dive a little bit deeper into all of those here in just a moment. But I think this gives us a really good illustration on just how deep each stage of the pressure wound is and how severe they can be. So in the first stage, we see that the skin is pretty red. Um, and then if you were to press down on your skin, it wouldn't lose the redness. And the skin that is red would be very painful. It would be a different firmness and a different temperature than say the lighter colored skin up here, which would be more of our normal skin tone. Um, so in the first stage, we can see that the, the wound is just in the first layer, which is the skin here. It hasn't gone down into the fat, the muscle or the bone yet. If it were to progress to a, a pressure wound stage two, the wound would blister or rupture and lead to an open layer of skin, which we can see here. We no longer had that covering that we have before. And then it would appear dry or shallow and sore without any visible like dried skin surrounding it or like dead flaky skin. Um, so if we look here again, we're still like only in the skin layer. We haven't gone through to the fat, the muscle or the bone yet. However, in stage three, the skin is completely lost. The fat is showing through the wound, which we can see here a little bit. Those little yellow bubble looking things would be our fat. And the bones, tendons, and muscles are not showing yet, or are they pal palpable, which simply means you're not able to feel them. Um, so again, we've gone through the layer of skin completely and now we're in the fat layer, which is why we can see that over here in our image. Um, however, we still can't see the muscle or the bone yet, which is better than in stage four, where the wound becomes so deep that the tendons, ligaments, muscles, and bones are visible and we can touch them. So in this image, you can see we've gone completely through the skin layer. We've gone through the fat layer, through the muscle layer, and then now we can see the bone. And even if you're looking over here at the picture image, uh, you can tell this wound is a lot deeper than the previous one. So in order to prevent pressure wounds, it's important that we change our position frequently. Um, and this is just to help relieve some of the pressure that you may be experiencing on those bony um, prominences that we kind of talked about earlier, like on the back of your head and neck, um, your shoulders, elbows, et cetera. Um, it's important that we inspect our skin every day and just to make sure we don't have them. This can be a little bit difficult, especially when we're talking about the back portion of our body. So we may wanna use a mirror or have a family member or caretaker help us with that. And then it's important we clean and dry our skin every day. Um, cleaning and drying it will just help prevent infection and making sure our skin is dry before we like maybe put on our shoes or um, even clothing can help them fit properly and prevent um, irritation from like the rubbing against the skin. 
It's also important that we get our exercise and we keep moving. Um, this kind of goes back to like changing our positions and just help, helping to maintain like a healthy body weight and healthy overall um, self. And then we also wanna focus on our nutrition and hydration um, because if we were to develop an infection, it would help us be able to replenish our body a little bit faster to maybe help get rid of the infection and then just preventing or promoting overall health in general. So when we're caring for a pressure wound, the first thing we should do is relieve the pressure. Um, kind of like we said earlier, making sure we're not like constantly applying the same amount of pressure to that area. So like say you have one on the back of your neck, being very mindful that if we keep applying pressure like or we're lying down a lot on our back, that's gonna keep, the pressure is just gonna keep being applied to that area. Uh, we also want to make sure we clean the wound to prevent infection and dress the wound to keep it safe from infection after we've cleaned it. It's always a good idea to use some type of antibiotic cream and um, just as another layer of protection. And then we want to make sure we 100% follow up with our physician uh, in case they have any advice on maybe how to prevent it or if they see a concern with the pressure wound because they're experts in um, knowing what they're looking at in that area. So it's important that we take their advice into consideration. So not all of us may experience a pressure wound in our life. So it's important to know how to care for a general open wound. Say you're cooking dinner one night and you accidentally cut your hand while you're trying to slice a carrot. Um, if that were to happen, we wanna make sure we wash and disinfect the, the cut um, if it's bleeding a lot or you have a lot of swelling, we want to make sure and try and elevate it. Keep your hand above your heart. That's a common saying I always heard growing up. Uh, make sure we use a sterile bandage or dressing to wrap, wrap the wound and then keep the wound clean and dry. And then I think it's also important to note too, like if your cut is big enough or deep enough, it could be important to go to your doctor and have them stitch it up for you but that is just like depending on the nature of the wound itself. So uh, for our overall skin health, it's important that we apply moisturizers daily, especially in the winter time. Our skin is so dry from the going in and out from the hot and cold um, and being outside in some of the more extreme weathers. Um, avoid super hot showers as it will dry out your skin and making sure that we apply moisturizer after we get out of the shower is important too. The best kind of moisturizers to apply are the non-scented kind. The ones with uh, a lot of scent can be drying to our skin just due to the added chemicals. We want to make sure we exercise and hydrate and eat a nutritious diet as these are all things that will help us become a healthier human overall. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Here are a list of the resources that I use to create this presentation. And thank you guys so much for listening.